it's like all these institutions, you know, how do we turn around the BBC? Uh, will the monarchy survive? How do we make the Church of England start preaching religion again? I mean, all these institutions that are failing, they won't return to what we want them to be unless the culture is pulled back from the brink. How do you pull back the, the culture from the brink? Well, through these, these institutions. So it's a kind of, it's a vicious circle. What the thing needs is leadership. You need basically political, cultural, religious leadership, leaders to stand up and say, we're going off the edge of the cultural cliff here. We've got to pull back. And then you start pulling back and then the institutions will, you know, resist or pull back or what, but at least the, at least the agenda will, will be set. You cannot expect the BBC or any of the, of the, of the, um, the, uh, the other representatives of the, of the, of the media to restore journalistic objectivity in a culture where it is axiomatic. There is no such thing as objective truth, and anyone who believes in objective truth is an imbecile. That is what we're told. That is what we're told. But once there's no truth, there's no principle, therefore politics is only ever about power. Correct, and that's where we are. That's exactly where we are. And, and, and the, the point about the establishment that you wrote of is that you think of them as the people who are privileged enough, if I can put it that way, to have had a really sound education, to be steeped in history, to understand that the institutions of freedom should be defended by those with a good voice education. and the, the ability to speak. Look, uh, my personal empirical experience is that the higher up the educational and social ladder you go in Britain, the more you find people who are irrational, ignorant, and bigoted. The lower down the social and educational ladder you go, the more you find people who are grounded in reality, they have common sense, they are decent, they are moral. Go figure, as they say in America. Why is this? Because it's the universities are the crucible of this ca civilizational catastrophe. Uh, it was the universities which were the principal vehicle for the revolutionary idea that came out after the war um, that um, it was what's been called the long march through the institutions, that you couldn't expect if you were a revolutionary who wanted to create a new, a new world, and you wanted to destroy the old world of the West and capitalism and the rest of it, you couldn't expect anymore the workers to rise up and seize the levers of power and economic power and political power. That was not going to happen. What you could do was instead to work from within. So you basically seeded ideas into the people who would then impart them to the next generation. And then you would gradually infuse the entire culture. It's happened in Britain to the letter. There's been no resistance to it. In America, there's been resistance. There's a cultural war going on in America. In Britain, it's been a, it's been a rout. Uh, it's been, uh, there's been no resistance, um, or virtually no resistance. Um, so, um, uh, if you're looking to people who are educated, I'm afraid they are the problem. They are the problem um, because, you know, I mean, I've been writing about this for more than 30 years. Um, uh, in, when, when, when was it? 1996. Uh, yes, 1996. I published my book called All Must Have Prizes, which was about the collapse of the British education system. And I, I put that in the context of the collapse of the of, of a moral consensus about right and wrong, truth and lies, justice and injustice, uh, the collapse of objectivity um, as part of this, this you know, it, it was a, a post-truth world uh, that was bringing about um, a complete reordering uh, of British society uh, on the basis that all the old traditions that have upheld the old order were all illegitimate. Now, 
That was in 1996, and it was already well underway. You know, we're two, what, two or three generations on from that. And, you know, you now have people basically running the culture who, have, who are very highly educated uh, in that. So the teachers, the, 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 the children I was writing about became the parents and the teachers or the people who are now running the country. So, you know, the idea that if you have educated people, you get out of this problem is the opposite of the, opposite of the case. Um, Education has been the problem it's because it's been, it was turned from being the transmission of a culture down through the generations into the overturning of a culture on the basis that the culture was illegitimate, racist, colonialist, and all the rest of it. And we are where we are. <laughs>